Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to the first video on Arjuna. Arjuna is a test automation framework. However, before I get to the specifics of Arjuna, for the purpose of this first video, I would like to discuss what are the different aspects of a test automation framework. So when we talk about a test automation framework, what are those considerations or what are those aspects of test automation which we need to keep in mind? The first one which comes to my mind is interaction. So what are those layers which you're going to automate at? Is it uh, going to be a uh, UI layer? Is it going to be a web service layer? Is it going to be network layer? Or is it going to be a system level automation? You have to deal with file creations or registry entries or environment variables, whatever the software does. Or is it targeted at a particular component? For example, you could have a part of test automation which deals specifically with testing databases. The second stage in dealing with interactions is that you locate the libraries which are going to help you with that interaction. When you start working with these libraries, what you realize is that if you were to use raw libraries, then what's the point in creating a framework? So you end up creating some wrapping functionality around them. It could be in the format of some static nature of code, the procedural style of code, or it could be in the format of some classes in which you have wrapped the raw functionality, maybe you're clubbing multiple things together to give an easy to use uh, method on top of it. Slowly you keep creating more and more of these wrappers. It reaches a stage that your framework has its own domain specific language. A DSL. And what you'll find is that the people who create these frameworks, they are knowledgeable about the underlying interaction library as well as the framework structure. But the users of these frameworks, they are not really uh, knowledgeable about the underlying libraries because they are conversant with the DSL of your framework. Is there anything wrong with this? Actually not. Because any mature framework actually reaches this stage at some point or other. Once you have thought about interactions, what you realize is that there is no concept of test in your framework yet. You would want test to be represented because you have multitude of them. You would want to have a scalable way of uh, doing setup and cleanup. So these things actually go beyond these interactions because you would want to validate the outcomes, match against your expectations. So for that, what you get introduced to is the concept of test engine. So if you're in Java world, you could most likely be using uh, test ng. Developers use JUnit. Similarly, in .NET world, you could be using MS test. In Python world, you could be using PyTest and so on and so forth. So just like interaction libraries, you start with the core functionality which is provided with test engines or maybe some plugins out there. However, soon you realize that's not sufficient. So you end up creating some base test classes or some wrappers around the raw functionality. Now, not as good as the interaction libs. However, there is a mini DSL which sort of evolves in your framework. And just like interaction libraries, is there something wrong with this? Actually not. This is a very natural progression for a mature framework. So is it what we call as a framework? Because so far it looks like that we are talking more about wrappers that you take an underlying library, it could be an interaction library, it could be a test engine, and you write some wrappers and maybe some more wrappers and some more wrappers. Is that what we call a framework? Are we done with test automation framework design? Soon you realize the test automation framework is not just about interaction layers, although that represents the core of your software testing, and you were thinking about automation as conversion of your manual tests to the coded world. You realize that Test automation framework is also not just about the test engine, the assertions. You realize that to have a proper test automation framework in place, there is a lot and lot of support features which are needed. Now, an example of that could be you need configuration. You could have a project level config. You could have a central config. You could have a context level config and so on and so forth. You need to add support for that. And another example could be uh, a CLI 
a command line interface which you want to add. Another example is adding data-driven support for various formats where you take data from let's say CSV or a JSON file or an XML file or database or a web service, so on and so forth. You could also be talk talking about localization. Now that's often an ignored feature, but becoming more and more critical in the connected world today. And you can keep listing all these support features. It all depends on the perspective. You could be thinking about these as the core of your test automation or as support features. But the fact remains that you have to add support for that. And as you build support for that, what you end up realizing is that if this box represents your framework, your interaction libraries, the wrappers around them are actually a very small part. Most of your code is actually about these support features. Any mature framework reaches this stage. So far, whatever we talked about is from framework angle sort of the backbone of the framework features. But finally, why are you creating the framework? It's to enable a test author to write test cases, automated tests, coded representation of the tests in an easy way, in a more robust manner. So one of the critical aspects is, how are the tests going to be represented in your framework from a test author angle? And it could very well support more than one type as well. So one of the more frequent ones represents a test written in a programming language. Now, the test could be a raw test directly talking to the interaction libraries. For example, in case of Selenium, it could be interacting at a browser layer, launching a particular URL, and then interacting with web elements. Or it could be at a higher level abstracted layer. For example, you could be using a page object model Further down the line, maybe you are actually talking in terms of business flows and not even in terms of pages. Or you could go for non-language represented tests. You could be talking about KDT, keyword driven testing. There's another very popular representation, which is Gherkin. So you can see that used in the agile world a lot these days. One fact which still remains is that whether you're going for language based tests, whether you go for raw or POM or flows or keyword driven test or Gherkin, at the back end of all of this, in the form of direct code or in the form of fixtures, it is still a code written in a particular language. Now, let's say that you were to move from language X to Y. Why would you do that? Because unless you're working for a very small company, which has one, two, three teams on which you can impose the choice of a language that all of you are going to work in Java or all of you are going to work in Python. For the companies which work in multiple contexts, for example, testing services companies or development organizations, they have teams working in different languages for test automation. So whatever we discussed so far, if you were to do work in a project which uses Java as the language, you have already, let's say, developed a very mature framework. But the moment the context changes from this language X to language Y, you have to implement all of this again. Let's call this the Lang X problem. So this is what I wanted to talk about. There are so many perspectives. There are so many ways to look at test automation framework. In the subsequent video, we would see which of these problems Arjuna targets to address. Thanks for watching.